You're listening to the AID Network. Hello, friends. Welcome back to Bricky's Guide to Breaking into Hollywood. I am Mark Bricky. This is my guide to breaking into Hollywood. My job is to do adventures in design, and I do it about 200 times a year. I get to go and interview people that have done something that has given them pleasure, like pleasure in the workplace, right? If if your job is a big part of your life, if your job makes you happy, your job will be something that will just change everything for you because living in America... We're going to work more than we do anything else. There's a lot less weekends than there are work days, just the way that it is. So you got to find something that makes you happy, something that challenges you, and really go to a place that you want to hang your hat. Today's guest on the special, Ian Jones Corte, he hangs his hat at Cartoon Network. He is the creator, the writer, the illustrator, the character designer for OKKO. I was able to interview him last summer when the uh, show was getting ready to premiere. And it was a really great time to talk to somebody who was raised in a household that valued creativity, that valued education. So many of the people that we interview, like myself, come from the island of misfit toys. But this was so fascinating to look at. But what is it like when mom and dad, grandma and grandpa, all get on board and nurture your creativity? You end up with a bright mind like Ian Jones. He has built a safe place for kids. We've heard so far this week in the different episodes that being a world builder is what Hollywood looks for. They don't just look for somebody who can make pretty pictures. They look for somebody that can tell a story and create a whole universe. Well, that's exactly what Ian Jones Corte has been able to do with his talents. He is a world builder. He's been able to build a world that's safe for kids, that challenge kids, that lets them know that everyone has the potential to be a hero, and a hero never feels heroic. They just feel like they're doing what they're supposed to be doing. This is a guy who absolutely loves making things. If you look back at his entire career, like we do in the extended version of today's episode, you'll hear that he's just naturally been drawn to creativity from making web comics before nobody else was, to making Real comics, real characters, telling real stories. Ian has always been able to be adventurous with his creativity. I would encourage you to be adventurous with your creativity by using my friends over at jackprince.com slash circle of trust, where you'll save off of industry low printing prices, free shipping all across these United States. Jack Prince can make anything that you need printed. So if you're thinking about expanding your world or selling your world, Start with some merchandise. Start with some stickers. With a Kiss Cut sticker sheet, you could build your own activity set, your own characters, send those out to people. It will mean more than an email that says, I'm looking for work. Ian Jones Corte, when he made OKKO, he really created a world where things are a little bit off, but the more you stay with it, the more that it makes sense. And this was the most fascinating thing from this interview and why I had to put it in this week's special where I'm showing you different people that have jobs in and around the entertainment industry, an industry I've always been attracted to. Ian told me that he doesn't have any one big dream, that he doesn't have one big goal and said, in fact, if he did, his life would be miserable because he would just be living for that moment. This is a guy, and I believe it when he said it, he just literally wants to make stuff. And so often in this world, you hear People focus on the end goal, but everybody will remind you, just make sure that it's fun. Make sure you like what you're doing and the audience will build. The the opportunities will follow. This literally seems like a guy that full-heartedly embraced that mindset of just making what he wanted to make and has been rewarded for it quite handsomely. To hear the entire episode, visit my website, AIDpodcast.com. Become a member of the Circle of Trust which unlocks daily bonus content as well as 800 plus episodes in the archive. Enjoy this 25 minutes taken out of a conversation that Ian Jones and I had at the end of it. I guarantee you, I promise you that you will be inspired to just go make stuff and let all the metrics dissipate and fall away. 
From Adventures in Design 639, it's Ian Jones, Corte. So, okay, KO, let's be heroes. Mm -hmm. This is a big deal. (laughs) We're sitting on your own floor of a building. Yeah. When I walked into the Cartoon Network main building, Mm -hmm. your poster's right next to the reception desk. Yeah. A painting of your artwork. (laughs) A painting of your artwork. Yeah. I mean, this has got to feel unbelievable. I mean, you have arrived. Even Variety said, watch out. He's one of the young people you keep your eye on. (laughs) So how does it feel to be at this moment? Are you able to celebrate this and realize what's happening? Yeah. Or are you just trying to keep your head down and make the next thing happen? Um, I don't know. I mean, it's said, I don't know by who, but that, you know, that feeling of arrival is kind of like death, you know, like mm-hmm. you feel like that's, it feels like maybe that's the end or an end point and you're not going to keep going. Um, I never really felt like that. Do you I feel think- the pressure of this moment though? Not really. Man, my you are, thing is, you're a hero. <laughs> my thing is, I just, I don't know. I just like making stuff so much. I, I get to go to work and make things. I get to go to work and make stories. I get to go to work and, you know, tell a bunch of drawings what to do. Yeah. Uh, it, it's, I mean, it's so fun to me that I, you know, I, I don't really... <laughs> I don't really think about like, oh, here I am. Every once in a while, though, I do think back like, um, you know, like Cartoon Network had a huge uh, uh, like it was a huge inspiration to me like, yeah. as a kid. Um, <laughs> this is this will be very telling, actually. Uh, in Maryland, uh, Cartoon Network wasn't on the cable system. But one day when I was, I think, in sixth, no, fifth grade, uh, they added Cartoon Network, Comedy Central. They added a bunch of, like, the, oh, cable is expanding. Right, right. Um, They added Cartoon Network, and from the moment I got home, uh, I didn't leave the TV, and my parents were even like, okay, well, we'll put your dinner on a tray so you can sit in front of the <laughs> what great parents the tv like they what un- great parents yeah, man. they understood think like, about that they understood that it was a significant moment for me the and kids having a moment let's take ian the food because he's yeah, not leaving the tv yeah they they absolutely knew and uh you know that was like it was hugely 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 inspiring to me um getting to see all of that programming uh come into existence yeah and those are the things that inspire me today i mean you know the show i make is you know an homage to that feeling of you know you're just so excited by something that you want to burst but now you're you're on the other side of that you (laughs) can remember being the kid who they brought the food to you because you weren't going to give up on the tv yeah now you're tethered in there's a kid right now watching your world and thinking if i could just break over there my version of that was 1984, and it was MTV. Ah, uh, yeah, yeah. And once I saw MTV, I'm like, I don't want to watch anything else for the rest of my <laughs> yeah, life. Absolutely. I loved it. Yeah, yeah. So I watched a couple episodes mm-hmm. of OKKO, OK and this is the message I got from it. I think this is a really important message in today's world. The message I got is everyone sort of has a hero quality to them. Mm-hmm. And it, it was interesting that, you know, through the main characters, you sort of see these heroic moments through everybody, and that yeah. helps them realize there's one inside of them. Do you see yourself as a hero? <laughs> I mean, I think I think heroes are people who, you know, they try. They just they just try. Um, I don't think a hero ever ends the day thinking I'm a hero. You know, they just go out there and they they keep doing the work that they try to do. Um, and I've had several heroes in my life who you know, try to give me the right environment who tried to inspire me, Yeah, you know, and these were people who they were just doing the right thing. And I think, you know, what I really want to do is take that word hero and sort of just let it be open to everyone and let everyone sort of, you know, be that hero. Well, I think that message is so important because like you and I were talking about a little bit ago, oh, I'm not a good illustrator or I'm not a good drawler, as a kid would say, because it doesn't look like the camera. And then 
we wonder why that kid goes and sees Spider-Man and goes, well, I could never be great because I was never bitten by a radioactive exactly. spider. Exactly. Exactly. And you showing them that, you know, the guy at the mall or the mom or the weird pet like has a heroic quality to him. That starts to get the wheel spinning that it's up to you to make the moment of the day, not to wait for some crazy cosmic thing to happen to you where your genes start splitting and you're an X-Man. Absolutely. And I I really thought that that was important to to allow kids also to see heroic traits in the adults around them. Because your whole story, if I'm following along and (laughs) doing my job. It sounds like really good parenting, you know, a really great environment yeah. gave you the emotional space to just build and to dream and not yeah. have to worry about like, I got to go find food for myself or figure out how to get clothes for myself. Yeah, like yeah. you were given the luxuries of life to sort of chase down your passion and not worry about survival. Like, unfortunately, some kids have to. Yeah, of course. Yeah. And, you know, I would say one of my goals, too, for this show um, and, you know, you I mean, you probably noticed when you watched it that it is. I mean, it's it's laser targeted at kids. Yeah. I mean, it's for kids. But I was able to watch it at 42 <laughs> yeah. and have a good time and understand sure. the value of everything. Sure. I mean, we make it for ourselves. We enjoy sure. it. We make it for the kids within us. But I I really want to make it. It's for kid kids. first, definitely. And uh, especially for the kids whose lives don't give them the space to feel like they have their moment in the sun right that they are the hero i'm trying to create a space where hey it's super fun it's super silly it's just a cartoon anything goes we're just having fun with the drawings and characters and wacky sound effects and this is a time of the day where you can just sit in front of the tv and just get so excited that when the show goes off you just want to go outside and run around in your backyard and, and throw sticks around or whatever, yeah. or just <laughs> find, find a place uh, where you can just be friends with someone who you care about. Yeah. Uh, you know, that's sort of like the whole feeling of the show. And it's, you know, it's why I end like every episode with, with the words, thank you for watching the show. Cause yeah. it's like, it is a show and it's just for fun, you know, but it's a wild 11 minutes. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's course. wild. All right. So I think one of the genius things that you did is the environment that they're in. Lakewood Plaza, right? Mm -hmm. That feels so much more realistic than Gotham. Because even though I say I'm from Louisville and you probably say you're from Baltimore, we're from the suburbs. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, and and that sort of that plaza experience. Yeah. That makes a majority of kids that are consuming this, that makes their world feel like, oh, if I just kind of look around, Mm -hmm. there's this adventure in my life too. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, for me as a kid... Uh, when you're a kid, uh, your life takes place in the margins. Yeah. Your life doesn't take place. There's not things that are made for you. You're finding stuff. And when I was a kid, I found inspiration in like those weird, like in between areas that weren't really for anything, like riding my bike through like the, um, riding my bike through like the industrial section of town. Yeah. Sort of being like. No one cares about this space, but now this is my space. I remember as a kid, like one of the most um, inspiring moments to me was I was that I rode my bike uh, through a neighborhood and I cut through like I cut through a backyard and I rode to get across to a street that I knew. And it was under these the gigantic power towers that run through every single suburb. And I remember just feeling like the immensity of that uh, and like little like spaces like that, that you're a kid and it's not meant for you. Uh, they kind of take on their own sort of magic, the yeah. kind of magic that a, a classroom, which is meant for you or uh, your space in your parents' house, which is meant for you, don't really have. And I think that I was always interested in, in these weird uh, spaces of like commerce or like going to get, getting to go to work with my parents or, you know, seeing, being in these strange spaces that weren't exactly meant for me. There was a lot of magic there and, and that's where the setting comes from. Well, also when you're a kid, you have a limited amount of land that you're able to cover, Yeah, you know, and let's have a moment of silence for that bicycle <laughs> yeah. and how the bike gives you all that freedom yeah, and absolutely. discovery. It's your X-wing fighter. It's your Batmobile. Mm-hmm. Like the bike is everything for yeah. you, but 
to this day, Ian, to that same idea you're just talking about, about being a creative person, about being a passionate person, enjoying how things come together. When I walk my dog, mm -hmm. I like to walk through the alleys. Yeah, yeah. Because it's very interesting to see how all these nice homes come together and the part Absolutely. that you're not supposed to see. And there's something about the way that things are fabricated and put together that the creative mind is like, oh, that's wild. Like, that's the house that's yeah. four, four houses up. Like, that double car <laughs> garage is so cool the way that it's put together. Like, you exactly. love that exploration. Yeah. But I remember riding the bikes to the power grid and to those weird areas where your parents are like, don't go over there and mess around with that. You're like, I've got to go figure yeah. out where this goes. You almost felt like you discovered something Absolutely. other than more houses. So I, I love the idea that you give the audience an environment that looks like their environment. You know, it's mm -hmm. not like, well, part of the exploration is gone because I don't live on yeah. a different planet or whatever, yeah, you know, like exactly. you make it very relatable to them. So I think that that's cool. But I also love the little subtleties of mm -hmm. there's like little dinosaurs running around yeah. everywhere and, Mom's car has a huge, looks like a weapon on the front of yeah, it. Like absolutely. there's so many little bizarre things that <laughs> now knowing you, it's like, yeah, that seems fun. Let's break the rules. Yeah. Um, so one thing, so the other uh, show that I spent my most time working on here at Cartoon Network was uh, Steven Universe. Yeah. Uh, and, you know, that's created by my now fiance, Rebecca Sugar. Uh, it's something that we worked on for several years. Uh Rebecca taught me a lot about creating characters and also creating characters that people could fall in love with. Yeah. But I would say the main concept that she introduced me to was the concept of the sublime. That when you see art that has touches or things that you start to see the logic behind them, even though you don't know the whole story, like, we're in Lakewood Plaza and you look at the, and, and you see KO get out of his car and you see that the front has like what looks like a battering ram yeah. slash turret on it. Yeah. And even though you never saw that thing fire, you never saw them do anything like crazy with it. Your mind starts filling in these gaps. Right. Where you start to, you start to see pieces of the world that exist uh but you didn't get to see and it makes it very seductive and very just it, just very engaging because mm. in animation every single thing has to be designed yeah every single thing has to be made like nothing on screen is by accident so there's a way where you can hint to a larger world just by the design of things and that was something that you know, Rebecca really impressed in me because Steven Universe, uh, for anyone who doesn't know, is almost a, a treatise on on Sublime mm -hmm. and, and Sublime Factor. It's about a kid who has a very uh, small pinhole view of a world that is constantly expanding larger and larger outside of his pure purview. And you see characters bring up powers or items or mention like other characters and and it reflects that feeling you had as a kid where you heard your parents talking about something and you know you don't know who bob from work is but right. your mind starts filling in these gaps and yeah you're like you're casting him yeah you 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 know what happens and it makes the entire world more real and so through that, I would definitely say OKKO OK is another practice on that. Uh, one of the things that we really tried to do is um, uh, in lots of animated shows, whenever there's a crowd of characters, you know, they're just like, uh, it's a crowd of just normal guys. They're whatever, you know. One of the things we tried to do is we want to make sure that you know every single person in that crowd is their own character. Yeah. They have their own story. Yeah. They're weird and idiosyncratic in their own way. And so we would build, we would design things. So, Oh, there's a character with snakes for arms, but we're not talking about the fact that he had snakes for arms. He's just trying to live his life, you know? And then it fills you in. Like, you're like, how does he brush his teeth? Yeah. Like, like what is his life like? And then you start like, inventing the world in your head before we can even show it to you. But why wouldn't you make that world? Because <laughs> you're the kid that always had to go to the library or ask your parents yeah. or ask your grandparents. Like 
you're putting that thread of discovery out there because that's how you lived Absolutely. your childhood. And in a weird way, you're teaching children diversity. <laughs> like, don't, it doesn't make sense, but don't judge them on that. And if you stick with this project long enough, we'll understand how yeah. the snakes for arms work. Like, it's <laughs> exactly. a really cool way to, to put it together. So this is something that I've been really curious with. Mm. I don't have kids. Mm -hmm. But I'm very tuned into the times and I'm not going to talk politics with you, but I'm very curious. We live in a time much different than any other time where uh, the actions of the president might get a kid suspended from high school. Right. Right. So we've got this sort of weird leadership in our country. Do you ignore that and say the cartoon is no place for that? Or do you try to lead by example and, and show people that path to heroism mm -hmm. and how to build good foundation personality traits. Like right. how much of that conversation slips into this world? Because I think about it as a parent right now, how do you parent when the most powerful person in the country isn't the most well-behaved person in the country? <laughs> right, right. That's a, that's a conflict for a child's mind. I'm curious how that affects your world. I mean, for us, honestly, the show is an escape. Mm -hmm. uh, the show is a safe place. Sure. From all of that stuff. Sure. Uh, which is why we made the show feel like notebook doodles the kind of things you would make yeah. in the margin yeah where you're just trying to have like a little bit of fun in your day sure uh because when you're a kid you know it's really idyllic and it's really fun but half the time grown-ups are telling you what to do uh so we're trying Those to make grown-ups <laughs> so we're trying to make this show that's like this is that little like five minutes this this 11 minute piece of just like I just get to have live my life with reckless abandon in this place. It's fun. It's crazy. It's exciting. There's a million things going on. But at the end of the day, people care about each other. People are valued. And that's There's why I asked the question. Because you're you know. a guy that I can tell has a big <laughs> heart. And this show isn't just like excitement and things blowing up for the fun of it. Like you were, you care enough and you're smart enough and you've got enough in you to where there's a story a oh, lesson yeah. to be learned in there which yeah. is important in <laughs> children's entertainment right sure. and i'm glad to see that still exists so that's why i asked this question because mm -hmm. even though it's an escape there's yeah. a lesson of reality that you've planted in there by sure. design i mean but also you know that lesson of reality is is also just a cushion for uh the person who wants to escape to this world sure i want them to feel like they would be welcomed in yeah. Like, you know, this this is a time, these 11 minutes are a time where you just get to have fun and, hey, everything's all right. Yeah. You know, it's the show is just it's training wheels. It's just it, it's just excitement. But then, you know, it's real. The characters are real people. who care. OK, so let me ask you this, because you can do let me just bring it off right here. Writer, storyboard artist, animator, voice actor, because you're able to do all of these different <laughs> things. Right. Yeah. Let's talk about your creative process. Mm. When an idea comes to you, mm -hmm. because you're the guy that can do it all, where do you go first with an idea? Do you just drive in your car and you start talking in a weird voice? You're like, this is a character. <laughs> like, where, how does it materialize for mm. you? Like, when it comes to you, do you put it right in your notes in your iPhone and you go home and sketch it? Like, if we're driving home today and we're stuck in traffic, like we're both going to be. Yeah. And an idea comes to you. How do you capture that and make sure that it doesn't just go right out one ear? Right. I, I, I have this feeling, um, so a lot of people uh, are very uh, protective of ideas, mm -hmm. um, and I'm not. I, th I think ideas, whatever, ideas, they're just ideas. They're made up things. You made it up. You can have 20 ideas before sundown. Like, ideas aren't important, yeah. you know? And there are a lot of people who are like, oh, I have this idea, but... I have to work for 10 years until I can do that idea. They're making I'm an like, excuse because exactly. they're to, afraid it's, of fail, failure. God, exactly. I can't get that out of my mouth. It scares me so much. I mean, it's, it's, it's just an idea, yeah. right? And an idea doesn't, it doesn't become anything until no. you expose it to oxygen. Right. So you find people who you can trust and you can tear, care, who care about you and your creative process and just you tell them the idea. And when they're like, oh, that's awesome. That reminds me of this. That is a multiplier. You you get another idea from that. And, you know, you just keep sharing your ideas and giving your ideas away, like over and over and over and over. Like, don't like guard your ideas, you know, like just share them, like put them out there. That's that for me is the thing that's the most important. I'm always 
uh, interesting when I meet people and before they'll give themselves permission to do something, they want to make a business plan or go the legal <laughs> route first, or I'm yeah, worried yeah. somebody's going to steal my ideas. I'm like, you have no success. Nobody yeah. cares about your ideas yeah. yet. And ideas and idea also, I mean, we're, <laughs> we live in a world where the amount of plurality of these ideas is amazing. Like right. two, two people, two different studios, two different shows can write the same exact episode or the same exact movie but how it's directed, how it's written, how it's how the set dressing is, what the special effects are like, how it's casted, will turn them into two totally different things. Uh, I'm not worried about people taking my ideas. Uh, and also, I also mine my life and the people who I care about for their ideas, and we all just work on them together. But when the idea comes to you, yeah. How do you get it out of your brain first? Like, it's, how do you document it or capture it? It's definitely sharing it with someone. Really? For me, for me yeah. That, so for me, it's talking not, about it is helping you sort of self-edit it. Yeah. For me, it's not real until someone sees it. You know, like like I can have it, I can write it down, I can sketch it, but until I show it to someone, you know, uh, it wasn't really real. So, do you write you it know? down or do you sketch it first? Um, for me, a, a lot of my stuff is, I, I like to sketch, mm -hmm. um, but I don't know. A lot of times it just comes out how it's going to come out. Like, you know, I think about something in my head and I'm sitting in the room with my writers and I'm like, oh, I was thinking about this. Yeah. Uh, I think this goes anywhere and I'll just like, you know, I'll just try to spitball as much as I can. But, uh, yeah, for me, like, you know, I, I. I don't even keep a lot of sketchbooks, honestly. I'll just use whatever's around, and I'll just write something down. And do you, so I'm constantly you, carrying little bits of paper around everywhere. So you're a paper guy, not like an iPad Pro guy? Uh, Yeah, yeah. I yeah. mean, just for getting an idea. Down. Yeah, just to there's get it just, out fast. There's no, I learned how to draw on paper. I learned how to animate on paper. It's yeah. Like, it's the easiest for me. So what's the, what's the big goal here? Hmm. You know, like the career's been taking off. Mm -hmm. Everything's just like a one nice step in the next direction. Mm -hmm. If we could have this conversation again in 20 years, what would you want to be talking about? I mean, making stuff. I would just keep, I would want to be making things. But what do you hope the universe gives you permission to make? Do you want to go feature <sighs> film? You want to make an amusement park? You want to make a planet that people live on? Like what, what, what is your big dream? Mm. I don't, I don't have one of those. I don't have an end point. <laughs> How could one of the I most creative this, people I ever met not have a dream? I don't have the I don't have a future goal like that. You I don't. just want to keep making things. And when the opportunities arise for me to make another thing or a bigger thing, I want to make that. I mean, that has been my entire life so far. I I you know, I got here and I I never thought I would be pitching a show, much less have a show on the network that is is super deep in all these episodes i just wanted to make stuff i sat down on adventure time and i was like i'm gonna make these storyboards i'm gonna draw these drawings and then they were like do you want to do this and i'd be like yeah i want to do that because i love making things right and then eventually it was like do you want to make this show and i was like sure and then they were like we're making this comic-con booth that is actually going to be your characters in three dimensional space and the actual store from the show yeah. like, for real. That's amazing. And they were like, you want to make this? I was like, yeah, I want to make <laughs> of course. that. You know, um, I just want to keep going on making stuff. That's like it. I don't, I don't, I don't even have a specific um, medium format or anything. Cause I have no idea what, what uh, opportunities are going to be there. I just want to keep, doing things okay so let me ask you this question we live in la okay yeah you meet wild crazy people in la mm -hmm. you're at a barbecue this weekend you're someplace with the missus and blah 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 and you mm -hmm. bump into a guy who's like a studio head and he goes hey ian i've heard <laughs> of you i've seen what you've done uh we're looking to you know we got some money here we want to make something yeah maybe it's that crazy netflix guy or amazon <laughs> guy who's just throwing money at everybody right and they're like what do you got for me i mean you, you got something right now <laughs> I mean, it all... I mean, I'm not asking you what it yeah, is, yeah. but you've got... I, I find it impossible that you don't have a checklist of things that you want to work toward. I mean, it would be really... I feel like if I had a checklist of things, it would really be limiting. Like, I feel like... Then you are I would, amazing, man. I feel this like, is blowing my mind. <laughs> you're, blowing, you're the opposite of me. This is blowing my mind. I feel like if I knew exactly what I wanted to make in the future, then I would... Then I, 
I I would just live my life trying to get to an end goal, which just doesn't seem right to me. I would rather have like an open-ended like idea of just being creative and doing stuff, working with creative people, like actually like putting the pen to the paper, making the stuff. I mean, Promises made, promises kept, right? You've got to feel inspired after listening to Ian's view of the world and his love of creativity. And maybe Ian made you, like me, question, what are your motives? Have you got lost in the metrics? Are you letting all these dumb numbers of followers and feeds and downloads get you down? You can't let it. You got to keep in mind what your why is, why you do what you do, where your final destination is, what is it that you want to make? And most importantly, when you make it, do you still have fun? I do. I love doing the podcast. I love these interviews. I like all things about it. And it's possible by people that go to AIDpodcast.com, sign up and become the Circle of Trust member, which brings two more hundred conversations just like this to you each and every year. Thank you so much for listening. We still have three more left in our series. Sign up today at AIDpodcast.com and I will see you tomorrow because right now my phone is ringing. <laughs>